So I'm out and about this evening because we have a very short window in the weather by the look of it and I've got so much to do. If you look at these boxes, I should have transferred these this week already or over the weekend and they are very, very full. The only thing that's helped me is the fact that the weather has been so awful, but I looked at one before and it had queen cells in it. They just hadn't gone, luckily. So I'm gonna go for a couple now. If I find queen cells, I'll split it and put it into two and then take the queen away or vice versa, whatever I decide to do. So there's a couple here that are really strong. I can just show you. This is the first one I'm gonna transfer over, all being well. Just so many bees in it. I mean, this is just ridiculous. I should have done this two, well, a week ago, really, at least. But, you know, I can't always uh, get it right. It's, this, is, this is kind of beekeeping in the real world. So I've got to go down and sort out. Uh, I've got some hives down there that I'm going to sort out. I've got to bring the hives up the slope, transfer them in and take them away. And it's not ideal, but like I say, it is what it is. This is the downside of running your hives on a kind of, a, we call it like a disused quarry site. I don't think we're going to be using that one. That needs a proper clean. Let's have a look at this one next door. So much to do, no time, totally disorganized. Loads of frames to move out. Oh, this one is reasonably clean, that's good. So what I'm doing is I'm using old frames that have been dead outs that are clean. And if they're not, they get melted down. But basically, these are all good frames. And I go through each hive as I use it and clean it out. Now, most of these were clean thoroughly last year. I know I should probably clean them more this year but I just haven't got the time. And to be honest, there's nothing wrong with them because they're reasonably clean. So I'll bring this up, transfer it in. We'll get the roof afterwards. What I must remember to do is to put my veil up. The great thing about, the only good thing about, I suppose, is transferring nukes when, when you're at your apiary. You, I wish these were in the apiary already, but they're not. The only good thing is I've got space now to transfer these over because I've taken some of these nukes out. So that's a great thing. At least they've got a bit of space now. So you can see this. Let's just have a look, see how full it is. Do up my gear before I forget. So let's take this off. These bees that are on here go into this box straight away. Other thing we've got to do is make sure the front of the box they're going to is open. Yes, it is. Because I've done this before. I've done a transfer. I wonder why the bees aren't going anywhere. And sure enough, the box wasn't even open, but it happens, you know. Just look at this, beautiful. These may well be absolutely fine. There's no reason why they should be swarming because I've got a young queen. The problem is the week we've had was so intense. Just look at the amount of bees just on the top there. If I can get as many of these done as I can, I'll be very happy. Getting that first one out is always the problem. Let's move this one across. That's why this hive tool is so good with the hook because you can just lift that frame vertically really without kind of well I wouldn't say without damaging the bees but it gives them the least chance of damaging them when you get a really full box you have to just literally take it out inch by inch that is beautiful it's also very heavy so there's still quite a bit of honey on that but that's honey on the back of it and guess what there's the queen so that is a damn good start <laughs>
we found the queen. So let's put her over here. So I can't, I can't do anything with this side of the colony because with this side, because I, I know she's laid into those frames. So if there's any space to give, it'll have to be on this side. This is a frame I put in recently because I gave it space when I did and looks like they've built it out completely. Yes, they have. Absolutely lovely. Mostly full of nectar though, that one. And this side. So as this is just full of nectar, this can go, to be honest, can go one up. That frame was perfectly straight, so we can move that one around. It's when you move them and they're not straight, you cause problems in the nest, okay? That's what you've got to be aware of. Look at the amount of bees on this. I'll oh, see why I was glad to find the queen, because she's in there already. I'm going to shake most of the bees off of this to have a look at this frame, and look, queen cells everywhere, not closed. That one's nearly closed. Let's see if I can stop these going. That's what you've got to do when you've got a lot of all open cups. To be honest, I could have split that colony. There's so many bees in it. Um, no, I'm just going to leave this one as it is and transfer it over because I think it'll be fine. Probably regret it later on. But the queen is still laying and that's a good thing. So, and we've got three or four days of rain coming. So if she's still there and it's raining now, it's pretty unlikely she'll go. Let's shake these bees off. Queen cell, queen cell but she's still laying. That's the key thing. So many bees in this colony, terrific. And now they're gonna have space and they're gonna be able to breathe. If the sun came out tomorrow, there's a possibility she could have gone. Do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to make a nuke from this box because I've got queen cells that are virtually closed here. So I'm going to leave that one there. That's a nice cell. And I'm going to leave that one there. And this is going to go in the middle. And I'm going to move that other box away. There's so many bees in it. I'm going to bring other frames to put in here. I'm going to bring frames to put in this box. Because the queen's in there, she'll get away and she'll lay really well now. So I'm going to close the front of that off in a minute. I'm going to flip it around now and close it off. Because I don't want any more bees to fly away. This can go on the truck straight away taken the queen away she won't swarm and I've made a nuke and they're going to realize they're without a queen so let me get the rest of my kit I've got up a couple of partitions as well I can use to dummy that down a bit because we don't need all those and I've got some nice frames here that I can use I think I need four maybe five is it drawn comb is a complete luxury so make arrangements to let's put a partition in each end and move the other frame across. And now that is a, okay, it's a lot of bees but there's still a fair bit of brood to hatch and there's queen cells in there and I've moved, sorry, and I've taken the queen away and there's no queen cells in that other part. So that can only be a good thing. So let's make this four frames and put two, two um, boards in this one as well. Uh, could really do with a frame of honey and I've got one in the truck. I can always add that later. 
So let's get, get this closed. And then that's a nice nuke made, or a box really. One partition going in there. So don't forget there's a laying queen in that box, this side, so she'll get away really quick anyway, which is great. Just leave that frame spare there. Take this down. And then put the roof on it and take it away. So that's one to go back home. So I haven't lost my queen there. Hard work up and down those steps. What I have got is another nuke with a tribal queen cell and maybe better weather next week anyway when that queen hatches. I think that's a much better risk myself. So I'm going to keep that nuke box up there and I'm going to bring another one up in a minute once I've sorted this out and got this ready. So technically I've created an artificial swarm this, but we already know that there's no queen in it and we know there's queen cells. So they haven't got to make a queen cell. So the bees will just carry on. They've got probably some more forager bees out. There's plenty of food around when they can fly and there's plenty of food in there for now. This is what you call kind of last minute, quick, adjustment to the colony to make sure when what I tend to do with my my boxes is if I've got a stone or a rock if the colony is requeening I'll put it sideways on middle of the box if it's good I put it at the front like that if the colony is lost I'll put it like that so if it was requeening or I put in a frame of eggs and bees and brood I'll put it like that so instantly I know I've got a right on the box so let's find some others that are really strong. I know there's a couple, probably that one. Yeah, that's pretty strong, but I'll have a look at that with another nuke. What's this one like? I think that's the one we're gonna do next. Let's have a look at that one. So let me get another nuke box out of my truck and I'm gonna split this in two initially and if it's not got any queen cells, I'm going to just put it in a hive. Main thing is, okay, it's not ideal this, but the queen hasn't gone yet, you know? And if the queen hasn't gone, that is your little window. That is your little get out clause that you don't lose out massively. And I hate being in this situation, and I had it last year with a couple of nukes that I didn't get transferred in time. But unfortunately, as I keep saying, it is what it is. There's nothing else really I can do about it. So I hope you guys can see that. Let's have a look in here and sort this one out. I don't think these bees are quite as forgiving. Shake that off into there. Let's see what we got here. First of all, where's my smoker? Here we are. Yeah, they seem okay. Just very, very cool. Okay, so let's just have a look. If there's no sign of any queen cells here, this goes in a normal nuke, in a normal hive, sorry. And we'll see what happens. Trying to get that first frame out. So much brood in here, about to hatch. Have we got any eggs being laid? Difficult to tell on this frame. It's pretty full.
no sign of any queen cells yet. Just pop this one in out of the way there, and then give them a little bit of smoke because these are darker bees. A little bit less pedigree. Let's see what we can find. Just want to see the queens laying in here, and then I'm happy to transfer this into a hive. Blimey, there's a lot of bees. Okay, so that frame is all honey, and there's no room for a... That frame's not been finished being built. Now why have they not finished building that up? I don't think she's going to be on that one. Okay, solid brood, but we have larvae and there's no eggs on the peripheries, on this frame, that's right from the centre of the brood nest. So I mean there's no queen cells. Maybe the start of one there. Okay, so this colony, there's eggs in the middle of those cells there, in that middle part, so I'm happy that she is still here. I'm just going to check one more frame. See, she's not got to that point, this one, where She's made her mind up. The other one had made its mind up, so you just have to make the decision, and I keep my bees. They're not running out the boxes the minute the sun comes out tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. So, loads and loads of bees. Okay, can't see her there. Let's have a look in this one. Loads of brood. Lots of larvae. This, this says to me that she's still running around, getting very congested, but no actual queen cells yet. There's another cup starting there, but there's nothing in it. Okay, good. So we can assume that she is still in this box. So now I'm just going to grab a hive and put her in and all the bees in this box and that'll be absolutely brilliant. So I've got myself a nice box. Check the door's open. Yes it is. There's our second frame already in. I'm going to check this frame configuration. This is the third one. This, yeah. See if I can see the queen. I know she's still here because everything looks absolutely normal. Just got to this one in time. It's such a shame when you literally run out of time in the spring and you, you always forget, but I'm, this will never happen. I'm going to start even earlier next year, but the weather was so poor before it started, then it became so good. You're running around like Arthur or Martha and you don't know where, which way to go. So. There's our queen, not marked. There she is. Just there. She's looking pretty big, so she's not in swarm mode yet, which is great. So that's brilliant. There's actually a lot of brood here on all these frames. I'm gonna go and grab a frame of honey from down the bottom and put it in this hive as a reserve for next week, because it will give them that backstop because I think they're going to need it in this one. So many bees in this box, lovely. What I remember is when I'm finished, I'll slide this box over to here, and then that will, oh, there's plenty of honey in this frame, that's fine, okay. So I don't really need to do that. Just full, full to the brim. Beautiful. Brood as well, as well as honey. Okay, good. So, let's get that last frame in. See what that last frame is. 
as I said, that was just honey and nectar. So this frame comes over as a spare, as drawn comb. They can instantly use that frame. And then they've got the resources still in the colony. Job done. Okay. So what I generally tend to do is I, as I've shown you before, I knock the front, I know the queen's in there. And then I just turn this upside down and all the bees come out and everything seems fine. A good knock, not too hard because you end up damaging the poly nuke, but just enough to get the bees out. So another one done. That was a good job done there. Very pleased to get that done. Okay, excellent. Just going to put the roof on this and slide this over first, huh? like I said, to exactly where it was. And the bees know straight away where their home is. So we've still got sunshine and I'm still doing these transfers. I've got a couple more to do because I've got two more hives left. But one hive's got a little bit of wax in my hole. I need to clear that out and I may not use that. But I've checked all those. This is an example of what you get. Those actually, those five at the end, they're all empty. So I just put them the other way. And there's another empty one next to it. And then next to that with the stone on the front, that's good, that's good. What I'm saying is every apiary, you always have some that are stronger than others. And all these now that were strong, obviously that's the one I've just split. And there's a queen cell in there now. And I'm taking the queen away in that box on the truck. But I'm just gonna do one more transfer here. But it was just to say that obviously every apiary, there's some that are slow. And I've got this story that I happened to me last year where I cleared this apiary completely and I left one nuke and I thought, oh, it's tiny. I'll never, it's like literally two frames of bees and maybe onto the third. I came back about six weeks later because I hadn't been here for about six weeks, believe it or not. Completely forgot about it. I came in to stream it. And in the middle of the apiary on that bench there was the most overflowing nuke you've ever seen. It had caught up. It produced loads of bees and brood. It didn't swarm, you know, no swarm cells. So I put it in a hive and it gave me honey in the summer. So it just shows you that bees will do their thing. They, they won't always work at 100 miles an hour, which we always like, but in time they will catch up. And that was the super duper queen. So I'm doing one more transfer here. These seem really calm. That's why we're gonna go for it, but <laughs> famous last words. You can see they really in-ground this box. The, the box is completely blocked up. I don't know yet if there's any cells in here. There may well be on this one, but it's not, it's not, I think it overwintered quite big. It's just a little bit slower than some of the others. So we'll see what we find when we try and lever out one of these frames. It's always a job getting that first frame out without hopefully breaking any spurs off inside they might have made, any brace comb without squashing any bees or rolling the queen. See how easy it is to get, this is gonna come out fine now, to get um, that one hook in when you're lifting out a frame vertically and you're hardly disturbing the bees at all. Just look at that frame, absolutely gorgeous. You've got some nice pearly white larvae there. Ow, wasn't very nice. So, maybe some early cups there, starting maybe, but nothing I'm worried about. Let's just knock those off just in case. Got a little bit of sunshine now, see if I can see any eggs. Yes, I can. She is still laying this queen, so we're okay. There she is. She's a little bit stubby, but she's also nice and fat. So I think she's okay there. I don't think she's in swarming mode. Because don't forget, when you see a queen that is really skinny and running around, she is ready to go and swarm. And if you've got uh, uh, some closed cells in your colony, she'll be off before you know it. Let's just find my smoker. It's a really important thing to remember, a little tip that, that if you do find a frame where they backfilled the nest, 
There's no eggs where the bees have just emerged and the queen is small and shrunk down. If you don't get rid of it, if you don't move the queen away or cage her or something like that, she will be gone. End of. Absolutely no doubt or whatsoever. It is getting late in the day, but we've still got a little bit of weak sunshine. So let's get this frame in now and go to the left of the colony. Beautiful frame, too much honey in it, but at least they've got provisions if there's no flow. Let's check down this side. There's nowhere they can build a cell there, and there's no cell there. And it looks like there's none on the bottom. So we're good. That goes in that side. As I say, I'm always trying to keep the correct configuration. Now it looks like this next frame is a slab of honey. So I'm going to move a frame across and that gives them instantly space for the queen to lay into. As soon as the bees have cleaned it out, she'll be laying into that. And it kind of takes the queen away from things for a while, gives her something to do. Now, there is actually a bit of brood on this, quite a bit, but it's full of nectar as well and pollen. Look, there's not a lot of room in this colony, but I am gonna leave, there's just that brood there. So, because it's such a big slab of honey on the other side, I'm gonna move this up one like I intended to. And that will go in there now and it'll instantly give them space. If you see any spider webs in your hives, just knock them off and take them out because bees absolutely hate it. It's not the fact that the spider's gonna kill the bees. I think it takes a lot of work for the bees to clear the spider webs. So, so these bees are a little bit anxious and it is getting late, but we've seen the queen. Look at that. Because I know this is right from the center of the brood nest, this is just drone comb. I'm gonna shake these bees off into the box and have a good look at the frame. Beautiful. Lots and lots of lovely eggs here. Exactly, and there's some larvae there that the bees that have just hatched out. You can see where she laid in that circular motion, but no sign of any queen cells here. And by shaking that frame, there's one cup there, look. Nothing in it. Good. Just getting to that point where they're thinking about it, but they're not. What I was going to say was, um, when you see frames like that, you know that that brood will hatch out. So it's really important to keep that momentum going and give those bees space. If you've got drawn comb, you can sneak in a frame between the good frames, as long as there's not too much brood and there's plenty of bees to keep that gap warm, which there is in this case, you can snick in a frame of, of drawn comb, which is like gold dust as we know. This is a more drony frame, which is fine, exactly what I'd expect. Just look at the volume of bees here. Just gonna give these a shake and have a look at this frame. Look at that drone. Absolutely amazing. This is where the queen's been laying. You can see she's had all this to lay into and most of the other side. So she's got room and you can see that lovely white larvae. In the, I don't know if you can catch that in the light. I don't know if you can see that, but there's plenty of white larvae there glistening beautifully. Best way to check against diseases is find your larvae, see if it looks nice and white and clean. But most of the time you'll find it is. That's drone, obviously. You see they've altered the cell to be a little bit bigger. But nice to see plenty of drones around now. We just need some good weather in about a week to two weeks when I start making my first queen cells. So again, it looks like we've got another slab of honey this end. So let's see what it's like and I might move that, let's move that frame forward anyway. This is drawn comb. This is a heavy frame, so make sure we I'm not going to squash it yet, it's a lot of... Oh, there is brood on... No, there isn't, that's honey, sorry, and pollen. I thought that was brood there for a moment. Let's have a look at the other side. No, it's just all stores. So that frame can go one back, like we said. And that gives the bees space both ends. So we're technically the brood nest is only four frames for the minute. But there's a little bit of brood on the left-hand side, one frame up, and there's no brood on the other frame 
two frames up or one frame up again but but that's okay because there's no brood to keep warm so that's a good kind of scenario we've created we know the queen's not in the box so i'm gonna give these a tap knock them down and just tip them out if you're firm and quick makes no problem done those will settle down I'll go and get the roof another one done this gets like it's good to see I'm just pleased that we're getting through this lot this is all managed now and I can go home tonight I'm going to try and get this one done in a minute but that is basically it for here the others are a little bit weaker so they can be moved so you know it's just a question of trying to put right uh, the mistake I made of not getting here a week ago and transferring them over or moving them to apiaries but it was so cold earlier in the week I couldn't but all that brood was still hatching out and the bees don't seem to care when they kind of finish on a roll which they did they had all that amazing weather and loads of nectar and then it went cold you can't get into them to check them because it's too cold but also they they keep going inside and they'll keep making um queen cells if they get too compacted because all those bees just keep hatching out and that's what you've got to watch so for now i'll bid you good night and i'll catch you very shortly take care bye bye